Hello everyone. I'm Hironori Fujinaka. Today, I'd like to talk about evacuation route guidance scheme for building evacuation using wireless mesh network systems. In emergency cases such as disaster, users need to have a thorough grasp of disaster situations and select evacuation routes for an efficient and rapid evacuation. However, there is a possibility that the infrastructure networks do not work smoothly because of the failures of base stations and the traffic congestion in emergency cases. In this research, we propose an evacuation route guidance scheme using wireless mesh networks to correct the disaster situation. A wireless mesh network is one kind of wireless multi-hop networks. We deploy multiple access points in the building to communicate among APs, and the mesh network is configured by APs. Mobile terminals can communicate with each other by the direct communication as well as through the wireless mesh network. Users can collect the disaster information stably in wider area and provide more efficient evacuation route to the, correct to the users than mobile ad hoc networks without depending on the user's location and density. At first, I'll explain about evacuation route guidance scheme. We assume that users have mobile terminals installing the evacuation system. User terminals can share the position of the users and the disaster situation among users through the wireless mesh networks. The position of the user is used to avoid congested routes. The disaster situation is used to avoid disaster locations. User terminals can grasp the disaster situation and the congested route by sharing the disaster information among users and provide the evacuation route suitable for each user. Therefore, users can evacuate efficiently by avoiding congested routes. I will explain about the building model in this research. As shown in this figure, this scheme is based on this model. It is assumed that the building is divided into multiple areas, called sections like this. Users pass through sections to evacuate the building. However, in this figure, Users cannot pass through section 10 to 11 and section 11 to 12. User terminals share the section state of each section among users, and the state are used to select an evacuation route. The state is classified into the three states, safe, blocked, and exit. Firstly, the state becomes safe section in case that the emergency case does not occur and the AP is working. User can pass through the section safely. Secondly, the state becomes blocked section in case that the emergency case such as fire disasters occurs or the AP is not working. Users cannot enter and pass through the section because it might not be safe. In this figure, there is a fire in the, in the section 11, so that users in section 1 cannot enter the section 11. Sadly, the state becomes exit section where users become safe and it is outside the building. 
exit doors are set between the exit section and the previous section. For each exit door, an exit rate users per second is defined. It determines how many users can leave a section per time unit. In this figure, it can be expected that users will be congested in section 12 by the exit door 1. Next, I'll explain about the wireless mesh network system. User terminals share the information to select an evacuation route using wireless mesh networks. As shown in this figure, APs are installed at the center of each, each section, and the APs are connected with each other. User terminals and APs transmit messages, including the disaster information, by flooding. In case that many terminals transmit messages by flooding at the same time, packet losses occur frequently and the transmission rate might become much lower. Therefore, we utilize two types of flooding schemes, local flooding and global flooding. The local flooding is a flooding scheme to transmit the messages by user terminals and APs. The messages are forwarded only in the same section. Conversely, the global flooding is a flooding scheme to transmit the messages by APs. The messages are forwarded among APs. In order to share the disaster information, the procedure A to C are repeatedly performed. This figure shows the overview of the data transfer. Firstly, user terminals transmit messages by local flooding. Each user terminal transmits its own user information so that the AP deployed in the same section receives the message like this. Then, APs can grasp the number of users and the section state as a section information. Secondly, APs transmit messages by global flooding. APs transmit the section information to all APs like this. APs which receive the section information from the other APs have a thorough grasp of the disaster situation and the number of users in all the sections through the wireless mesh network. Finally, APs transmit messages by local flooding. Each AP transmits all the section information obtained by the other APs to user terminals in the same section by local flooding, like this. User terminals also have all the section information. Therefore, user terminals select the evacuation route based on the section information. Next, I'll explain about the evacuation route selection scheme. In this figure, the user terminal in section 10 selects a less congested evacuation route. The numbers of each section indicate the number of users. User terminals set the number of users in each section as the waiting value. The waiting value of blocked sections is as much as big value because the users must avoid the evacuation route, including the blocked sections. Users select the evacuation route with the lowest value, so that they can avoid the evacuation route, including the congested section. Therefore, the left route is stronger than the right route, but user terminals 
select the left root because it has less weight. Whenever users enter the next section, they reselect the evacuation route. Next, I explain about simulation experiment. We confirmed whether users evacuate efficiently using wireless mesh network based evacuation system and evaluated the wireless mesh network based approach in comparison with the shortest approach. Initially, users are randomly deployed in sections, excluding blocked and exit sections. Moreover, users move to the next section along selected evacuation route. In the simulation experiment, we set the information sharing interval of user terminals at 5, 10, 30, and 60 seconds. They represent WMN 5 seconds, 10, 30, and 60 seconds. Evacuation criteria are congestion degree around each exit door, average and worst evacuation times, and volume of messages transferred by user terminals and APs. This table shows simulation parameters. We use the network simulator NS3. The number of users are 100 and 200. Users move at between 1 and 1.4 meters per second. We use IEEE 802.11g as a MAC protocol of user terminals and APs, and transmission range of user terminals and APs are set at 20 meters. This figure shows simulation field. The field size is 100 meters by 100 meters and each section size is 20 meters by 20 meters. The exit rate for each door is set at 0.2 users per second. It means that one user can pass through the exit door for 5 seconds. We focus on the simulation results in case that the number of users is 100. This figure shows the number of users who pass through each exit door. The shortest approach does not use wireless mesh networks and shares the section information among users. In case of WMN 5 seconds and 10 seconds, the number of users who passed through each exit door are almost the same. However, as the interval becomes longer, the mesh network approach becomes the same as the shortest approach. This is because the update of the sharing information is slower than the user's moving speed and user terminals cannot use the up-to-date section information. This figure shows the number of evacuated users every 20 seconds and the number of accumulated evacuated users versus the simulation time. The number of accumulated evacuated users indicates the number of evacuated users every 20 seconds becomes slower as the evacuation time and the interval become longer. 90% of users can arrive at the exit section by 140 seconds in case of WMN 5 seconds, but by 180 seconds in case of WMN 60 seconds. This is because the exit door 1 becomes congested by users, and the queue is built up in case of WMN 60 seconds. This table shows evacuation time and the volume of transferred message.
the number of loops counts how often users make a loop, namely passing once again the same section on their evacuation route. In case of 5 seconds, the average and worst evacuation time is the best because users can always obtain the up-to-date section information. However, in case of 30 seconds and 60 seconds, users are not sensitive to the change of the section information so that users take a less loop route. Finally, I give you the conclusion. We have proposed the wireless mesh network-based evacuation system and conducted the simulation experiment through Network Simulator NS3. It is confirmed that users can move to the exit section dispersedly and shorten the evacuation time from the simulation results in the wireless mesh network approach. In the future works, we have a plan to consider more appropriate information sharing in Tava and evaluate wireless network performance such as packet loss rates. Thank you for listening.